um, at the heart of everything we do, making better quality food um, more affordable um, for more people on average income, average diet. So it's about kind of getting rid of those feelings and finding ways of business model to uh, manoeuvre around the prices that we all, we all have this perception of best quality food has to be more expensive. We say no to that, that just depends on what you money. Support shareholders and make them rich, then yes, you've got to put them in the market on the food and you don't need to do that. And then uh, that's a bit more business model. So it all starts um, with our pilot store in Brighton, and if you've seen it, it's on York Place uh, opposite uh, St. Peter's Church. That's half of it, it's a massive store. That's half of the front window. Um, so the intention is that we will um, provide good quality food that's been sourced sustainably and ethically. <coughs> And it's, it's um, aimed very squarely at people on average uh, incomes, everyday diets, eating regular food, and just making an offer for them that means that they can shop less exclusively in the supermarket. So we'll, put, uh, we'll source good food responsibly, um, pay suppliers fairly, pay staff for the, the, the living wage, which is the Brighton and the Home Living Wage campaign. Um, help people make those more sustainable choices around food, so they're getting the right level of information so that they can engage and make choices that, that feel right for them. Also support local food programmes like Tim's Project, like other stuff that's going on like locally, how can we kind of tie into that and support that? Because our, our kind of tagline is an ethical supermarket for everybody, but clearly if people are used to shopping in uh, Iceland uh, and Vidal, they're not necessarily ready to, to move straight into coming into a Hispanic store. So how do we kind of bridge that gap for them? And I think it's exactly programmes like table setting up that will have to do that um, and not have to kind of reinvent that way ourselves. Um, and also the main thing is just to sell good food um, at fairer prices. So our, our, the three things that are on our door at the moment, this, our refit's going on at the moment, but uh, on the other side of the door, it's, uh, it says um, more, more affordable, more fair, more sustainable, and those are the three things we plan to over deliver on. And in this presentation, we'll tell you a bit about how we're going to over deliver on those problems. Exactly. So, you imagine regular supermarkets at one end, infinity at the other end, we're in the middle. You know, we're not trying to be a health food or a whole food store, we're trying to raise the standards of these guys over here, the Tesco's and the same things go, this is how a supermarket should be. So, we don't consider infinity to be competitors. They do what they do brilliantly, and they're fo very focused on vegetarian and vegan customers, and that's brilliant. But what about the next layer of people who, who do eat sausages and bacon and eggs and all the rest of it? So that's, that's where we're headed. And we've been at this for three years. So three years ago, we um, came up with this idea, and we moved to Brighton two and a half years ago to set it up because we thought it was the right place. Our hearts brought us here anyway. And, um, and the vision and the idea of the business brought us here, we love it here. And so we've been working for two and a half years on defining what uh, a, a supermarket how it should be is, writing the policies for sourcing, um, working with suppliers, connecting with suppliers, finding the right site for the process, writing the business plan, getting the investment into the business and the financing up. We've got £93,000 in the pot from uh, private investment and grants and funding, and £30,000 from crowdfunding, which if anyone's interested in, we can talk, we can talk more about afterwards. Um, and we are ready now to push the button on the refit and um, it's happening, it's all happening, it's brilliant for us after two and a half years of working on this with a lot of help from people. We had some great help from the social innovators group for Good for Nothing. We've had help from Tom, we've had all kinds of help from different people who just wanted to put in time and effort. And that's been one of the great things actually about doing the social enterprise is that people want to, they gravitate towards what you're doing and they, they want to give you help and we just love that. I used to work in the corporate world. Jesus, I mean this is so much better. So, you know, on that note, we thought we would tell you a little bit about our backgrounds and what we've done before this. Yeah. Um, so, um, most people don't know which of which is going to be this but I'm Amy. Uh, and my background is predominantly in, in public and uh, voluntary sector. So, um, that's not me. <laughs> that's not you, that's not me. No. No. I'm pretty sure I Sorry. Sorry, I <laughs> carry on. Well, I'll tell you to do that. It's got the essential mix of the picture because obviously I'm here. So we look like this in the picture. Yeah, just a bit um, So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm public sector and a voluntary sector. Love working in both. Um, work for Metropolitan Peace and London Fire 
Brigade and um, Groundwork version 2.0. This is me. Um, um, yeah, and Groundwork. And the majority of the projects that I, that I worked on, work with Princess Trust as well, were all around um, behavioural change and encouraging uh, shifts in attitude and shifts in behaviour, <coughs> mainly in communities and, and, and often, and most often. Um, with young people as well. So that, that's kind of my background. But when I decided to move to Brighton, um, I wanted a bit of a change between anybody who works in community and youth work will know that uh, there comes a point where you get pretty jaded and then it's tiring and um, you start wondering how best you'll be. And uh, you, so I decided at that point, okay, let's get something else going and maybe go back to work after that. Um, so I moved to Brighton and I was really, I was really taken with, uh, I was up at the marina, I was really taken with the little food market that was going on there on a kind of two, three week, two times a week basis. And I moved from Manchester and had a contact in Manchester um, for uh, a, the Aromo Coffee Company, which at the time was the UK's first direct trade coffee company. So it was a group of guys from the Aromo region of Ethiopia who had moved to Manchester to educate themselves and had this kind of brainwave that while they were here, the way to kind of support themselves and sustain themselves was to trade coffee directly with their family and friends from the village back home and to cut out that premium that was being added on this very high quality coffee um, by trading directly. And they were packaging it up and, and having a rest of it and um, <coughs> coffee shops around Manchester. So I really, really liked the product, really liked the quality of the coffee, really liked the story. Um, so I set up very little kind of sole trader business called Coffee with the Conscience and I took that out onto the market at the marina and kind of let them try it, basically move it out and let them try it and started talking to people about um, fair trade, direct trade, why they were important, what the difference was, you know, people had, a lot of people had really kind of skewed perceptions about what it meant if you bought a fair trade coffee, like this, this, this farm is now kind of living in some kind of luxury, well, the reality is it's just got a pair of shoes but they're not even new. So, you know, it was kind of, yeah, that was a really good grounding to understanding all the different misconceptions just around this one product. So, um, what were people buying decisions around it? Why were they choosing the brands that they, they were choosing? Um, you know, what, what, what was influencing those choices? Um, then Ruth came over to visit, she was still at this point in the big bad corporate world, and we got chatting about all this confusion and lack of trust, not knowing what to believe about this one product, coffee. And we started thinking, okay, well, if there's that much going on with just this one product, and what about all the other products in the supermarket? We don't know quite all about any of them. You know, should we know more about all these products that we just, you know, quite happily buy a basket full of and walk out and have really no clue about where it's come from or how it's been made, and we just go, oh, that'd be nice to tea, and, and take it with us. So we started really kind of, thinking for ourselves, we need to become more ethical consumers, we need to understand what we're buying and, and what's going on. And that kind of then led us to this point of going, wow, it's confusing and wow, it's really complex and all the issues kind of overlap and it's difficult to, to navigate. So how do we find a way then of explaining all this stuff in not a dumbed down way at all, but a really kind of concise and easy to understand how we help people engage with all this stuff that's going on and, and more importantly, make choices as a result of the new information that we give them, or take action against some of the stuff that's going on that they then start having to away So that, that was kind of where this we started. And, and I think it was just over probably a cup of coffee, since that's what we were doing at the time. We were completely wired on the side. Bloody cold, it was all we drank was coffee. It was really cold. Um, and in the conversation, uh, we just came out, well, this is just, this is just coffee how it should be. So that's kind of where it's been and how it should be. It was shot me down in the coldest winter, right? You never know. I think Martin's cool. That June. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So meanwhile, our lady was, you know, in her community work and youth work and um, very kind of public service focused work. I was in the corporate world, was 15 years with big um, uh, suppliers, um, Unilever, Sara Lee. Uh, working on sales and marketing roles, advertising, managing, you know, multi-million pound accounts and lots of big budgets, and negotiating with Tesco. So I used to be the, the girl that got, you know, the um, hard negotiating sales from Tesco all the time, and they are very, very hard. Even for a business like that big, they tell you what to do, and it's very difficult to negotiate with them. And there was a turning point in my career which involved chicken pies. So, 
I was uh, waiting for my buyer. I wasn't selling chicken pies, so these are the air pressures. Oh, the glamour. Um, I was waiting in the car, um, and I was waiting in the waiting room, 20 minutes wait for the Tesco buyer to stand in his park for game and keep you waiting. So he was um, more than usually excited when I saw him. I was kind of, oh my, you know, what's going on? He said, well, I've just come out to a very inspiring meeting about chicken pies, so I had to ask him, what? And he said, oh yeah, we just paid Tesco a couple of figure, 19 million pounds. Oh, that's interesting. He said, yeah, we found out that, you know, the chicken in the economy pies was too good. And I'm like, oh, really? And then, is there such a thing? He said, yeah, you know, the, the, the guy who'd been making chicken pies for 30 years, he's putting all the good chicken in the pies that we sell for for 1.99. And so, obviously, we made him take it out. <laughs> and so now, you know, they downgrade the quality of the chicken in those pies. Keep them at 199, they save Tesco 19 million pounds, and that's the principle. This is what you know Amy said earlier about engineering the goodness out of food. Tesco and the supermarkets have been doing this for 30 years. Now it means that if you haven't got much money, you eat crap. But who's Tesco? Yes, I shouldn't have said that. I'm not supposed to ah, name the supermarkets. <laughs> <laughs>
food and hip hop clothing store. So,
fairly traded to avoid the kind of tomatoes they, they issued. Um, so yes, that's the kind of hierarchy. If it can be local, it will be British and then fairly traded. And then all our packaged groceries, so anything that's branded, um, we will stop the, the three highest scorers on the ethical consumer index. So the ethical consumer produced this huge raft of, of information every year. They've been doing it for 30 years, looking at all the behaviours and practices of different brands. And they score that. And then at the end of that, you end up with you know, the most ethical products in each category. So we'll use that as the benchmark to decide on the uh, on the grocery on the which we have. So yeah, that's that's kind of in a nutshell. All all this has been put together at the moment by a consultant. We, we won the um, social enterprise festival quite in last year, and we we got quite a big chunk of consultants money for that, and we've just spent that you know, on print, all, all of that consultants money into finding uh, a consultant who can put together. The history way, which is essentially uh, sort of the most important thing. So that's going on at the moment. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, so basically, the wider purpose is this: we're trying to change the food system. We're trying to make it fairer and more sustainable. We think by building a supermarket and showing how supermarket should be, it will change things, and that supermarkets will have to change, and people's behaviour will change. Because the food industry won't change unless more people on everyday incomes like make good food choices. You know, it won't change until you know people who are just starting to learn about this stuff act on it. And things are changing. I mean, when we first started talking about this four years ago, we talked talk about sustainable food issues and people look at us like we're nuts. But nowadays, you know, it's in the media a lot more. There's been food scandals. There's a lot more to come because there's a lot of murky goings on in the food industry. Um, and it's just starting to come out. Um, so there's a lot of awareness around it. We've tried to create a bit of a language around it. We think in the 21st century, supermarkets should just be doing this stuff. That's how it should be. Because that's the right thing to do, and it's about responsible business, not just making a short-term profit. So we've built this language around it, and I'm not going to go into every one, but these are our eight everyday choices. We'll use them to sign those areas in the store, so it'll look quite different to a normal supermarket. And we blog about them and we talk about them. They are go local, choose seasonal, protect nature, support ethical, think welfare, save fish, end waste and avoid process. And together, they represent a fairer and more sustainable food system and a healthier one. Because generally, the closer you go back to the natural, more simple way of doing it, the more, the more, the more healthy it is. For example, factory farm, battery farm pigs, you know, farms in their thousands, never see the light, never make out cage pigs. Um, are pumps full of prophylactic antibiotics and all kinds of chemicals, and they are, it's a fact, less healthy than the ones that grow around the field the whole life. Whether or not you believe in stuff beyond that about eating food that's been made in negative energy, I don't know, some people do. But you know, the pure fact is it's healthier. So all of this points towards a better way of life anyway. And next one, please. So yeah, I'm just going to quickly make a point on this because I'm aware of the time. So um, what's the difference between us and a regular supermarket? We get asked this a lot. Firstly, we're a community interest company. That just is, as far as we're concerned, how a company should be. So it's a company that's set up with a social purpose as well as to make money, and the profits go back into that purpose rather than just get distributed among shareholders. Secondly, we sell food you can trust at fair prices. It shouldn't be too much of a stretch, you know, that's just how it should be, but that's what we're going to do. Um, but all the good stuff in one place, and we show you where your money goes. We've got this transparent pricing policy, which is going to look very cool in the store. Tell the story of good food simply, through the eight everyday choices. Why choose an organic egg over a non-organic one? It's our job to make that clear and, and explain why. We're creating a 21st century shopping environment using the kind of technology that you kind of expect. I mean, supermarkets are so out of date, you know, they're from the 1950s. They're completely out of date. They're just boxes that are uh, filled with strip lights and they follow the same way of being for so many years. A 21st century environment is it, going to look completely different and feel completely different. Um, we're looking to other businesses. We've got local um, food businesses renting small pods within our store and serving their products to our customers, which helps us cover our rent and make the food cheaper. So we're kind of incubating other businesses that do food 
how it should be. And finally, involving customers properly, which is why we've taken a two-year run-up to this opening of this store. Because we wanted to get the, you know, we wanted to get the buy-in of people locally. We wanted to do it right. We wanted to go to the council and the Green Party and the, all of the different food groups that we've engaged locally and do some collaborative effort and change our plans according to what people want. Which is the antithesis of what a supermarket does. A supermarket goes in and posts itself. We try to build it collaboratively and finance it collaboratively. So instead of going to the bank, we're trying to do crowdfunding. Where we did the crowdfunding on site where people could put in 10 to 1,000 pounds. And we're inviting investors. You know, we're looking for 50 investors to have a brand. And again, for every brand that we raise that way, we're not going to go to a big bank. So it's about involving customers properly. Oh, next oh, one. Sorry, I keep looking at the same. I've got time to do this. And so, you know, this says it all. How it should be, it should be make good food more affordable and more fair and more sustainable than the mainstream supermarkets. And that's what's on our door and that's what we stand for. And we think we're, we think we're ushering a new way of, of, of supermarkets in the 21st century. Next one. I think that might be it. Oh, no, yeah. All right. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Some of this can be passed on earlier. Yeah. Do you want to just quickly do that? Yeah, so opening at the end of this year, ideally at the end of September, it all goes pretty smoothly with the refit. Um, we're putting together our local supply chain at the moment and the wider supply chain. We've also got the CSR offer out to businesses at the moment where for £500 pounds, they'll get £600 pounds worth of uh, discount vouchers to give to staff. They'll also get a plaque in the store on our wall of thanks, which is everybody that's made this store possible. There's a wall of thanks at the till that's been designed in. Um, and they'll get uh, other incentives. So looking for looking for other businesses and employers locally to, to kind of support it with the chunk of 500 quid. Um, and the rest of the money is coming in through crowdfunding as we continue with our summer campaign with the, the Give and Take Cash Machine. Um, from people generally just contacting us, which, which happens every time we get something in the August or every time we get to the national press. Um, and um, yeah, the loan is that we've said, um, we're looking for 50 people, well, we're looking for 46 people now, aren't we? Yeah, we've got, we started last week, yeah, of course. So, uh, we're looking for 46 people to loan us a thousand pounds, and there is obviously uh, a rate of return to be negotiated and other incentives that you would, you would uh, be able to enjoy uh, as a result of investing in, in, in that way. So that's where we're up to, and we'll see you all in September when we're Yeah. Mm. So thank you for having us on.